Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. In this video, we'll be going over Section 20 of D160, Radio Frequency Susceptibility. Section 20 discusses radiated and conducted susceptibility. We'll be talking about conducted susceptibility in this video. During this test, we're going to inject radio frequencies onto the interconnecting cable. This is going to be run between 10 kHz and 400 MHz, and it's going to be induced onto your interconnecting bundle or bundles using a bulk injection clamp. The purpose of Section 20 is to ensure your system can handle environments with HERF high intensity radio frequency, TPEDs, which is transmitting portable electronic devices, and other installed system emissions. The category for Section 20 consists of two letters. The first refers to the conducted susceptibility level. The second refers to the radiated susceptibility level. We'll be talking about conducted in this video. When looking at the category descriptions in DO160, it gets a little confusing. I wouldn't pay too much attention to this because DO160 doesn't distinguish between CS and RS when discussing these categories. I promise to follow up with a video on how aircraft manufacturers select categories depending on the system and their location. For conducted susceptibility, there is a calibration required. Both calibrations for RS and CS are quite similar. Both use the test equipment setup to record the forward power required to achieve the category level at each frequency. However, CS uses an arbitrary load of 50 ohms to determine the test equipment efficiencies. Now this means that you only need to calibrate one time even if you have multiple setups because you're just really calibrating the test equipment and not the environmental loading effects of your system setup like RS. Now this test is typically done at a testing house because of the complexities of the equipment. For your equipment, use the test setup shown here and in figure 20-9 of DO160. If you have multiple bundles like this example, each bundle will have to be tested. The testing house will start by injecting a 10 kHz continuous wave signal on the first bundle and monitor the current level specified by your category and the power level specified by your calibration. Once one of the two levels is achieved, they will hold for a minimum dwell time. This dwell time should be determined by your system response time. After this minimum dwell time is achieved, they'll switch the function generator to square wave and hit the same level, hold for the minimum dwell time, and then move on to the next frequency. They'll sweep the entire frequency range from 10 kHz to 400 MHz in this manner, hitting 100 points per decade. This will be repeated for each mode and on each bundle. The intent of this test is not a damage test, however, if you're testing to categories high like CAT W, Y, or O, it's possible to see damage. However, always write the acceptance criteria that the system shall not have any performance degradation during the test. Monitor your equipment and ensure that you pass. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.